Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Factorio Space Age. Couldn't remember what the game was called for a minute. I've been working a little bit on the Gambletron 4000. I think we're going up to the whole next level, because this is a totally different thing than the Gambletron 3000. The Gambletron 3000 is beautiful, and it's been doing what it needs to do, though. I had too, too many of these getting crafted uh, for this guy to keep up, but that's a different problem. We've been working a little bit on figuring out the best way to do it. I would really love a method that allows for more than one uncommon crafter because that's going to be the, the first sticking point. As I scale these up, we're going to this guy's going to be running full time and too often, right? So that's going to be the first issue that would happen. So I'm wondering if instead of ooh instead of doing it this way what if i did it this way or uh, i get sorry that's a uh, legendary and that's a peak and that's rare and then and then the rest is uncommon and then i can if i really wanted to i could fit three around one chest so that could be a thing um, that's interesting. So that'll at least help a smidgen. One smidgen of help. Yeah, we could do that if we need to. Um, the problem is they're going to fight over ingredients, uh, which is kind of annoying. So I could make it so this inserter can only insert if this building is running and that will at least yeah. i mean it won't fix things perfectly because then that'll run one item will come in it'll pop in here and then it'll sit there and it'll of course be the uncommon biter egg and that'll spoil by the time it gets around to running again um you do it where they're all uncommon crafters so code cone the problem is then that ruins the whole sorting of items into different chests and again how do you get the items to the correct building um it just doesn't it doesn't really work right like with having single tile chests it's really hard to get ingredients where you want them to go when you've got a bunch of separately controlled a single belt of all uncommon that feeds them all Wait, but if they're all uncommon ingredients, why would I ever switch it to these? In the chest at the bottom with special ingredients. Hmm. Hmm. It's an intriguing thought. I think it's a little too uh, far off of what we're doing right now. That, that feels like a whole project in and of itself to even consider how that could work. It is an intriguing idea, though. It could work. There's lots of issues I can already foresee it having, but I'm sure they could get ironed out. Um, the other idea, someone already mentioned this, is just sushi belt, um, which is also possible. You make a big loop that essentially... Because the Gambletron 3000 has worked okay basically having a building that's controlled by contents of a chest. So then the idea is, you know, you just have this operating like a chest, right? All the items are in here. And obviously your loop needs to be long enough that it could have a relatively um, statistically likely scenario where like, even if you got unlucky and got a bunch of the wrong pieces in a row, it still wouldn't jam up. So you'd have to do some math on like how many different pieces could I potentially have without still without being able to craft something. And then you probably want to double that, you know, because you could fail to get a superconductor a bunch of times in a row. And then that would cause you to have more blue and red chips than you should have. The law of large numbers does state that it is technically going to average out. However, the problem is it's also, if you look at the variance between when you get too many superconductors to not enough superconductors, 
there will be peaks and valleys on that variance, which promises that at some point, the peak will be too high in terms of how long you've gone without getting a superconductor, and you will have too many, you know, uncommon red and blue chips and quality module twos, and it'll jam up. So you would have to have jam up prevention for it to run forever because it technically would have a 100% chance to fail eventually, no matter how big you made this. Though, as you make it bigger and bigger, the chance that it actually fails within your lifetime <laughs> or the span of your gameplay, it does go down pretty quick. Um, so you could make it reasonably big enough that it wouldn't fail, but you could technically never prevent it from failing, which is also weird. Which is, this, which is just as true with a chest, by the way. That's true here. Um, it's just... The chest is so big. I know it looks like there's a lot of stuff in here, but that's just because we had too much input. Um, the chest is so big that like, we're already into the, this would probably not ever fail within our lifetime type of numbers with the size of a chest. But uh, anyway, I don't think we're gonna do it that way. That is a very interesting thought with quality. And if you guys didn't love the Gambletron 3000 episodes, I apologize because Gambletron 4000 uh, incoming, <laughs> but I'm just gonna work with this. Okay, this is just what we're gonna do. I, I I would like to get it done. Speaking of lifetimes, I would like to get this build done in this lifetime. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it this way. I know that there are other ways we could do it and in some cases better ways that we could do it. I also kind of just realized, uh, I guess we just send these I think the easiest way to do this is to put these back on a belt. Oh, this makes it kind of messy. Maybe something like this. Um. <laughs> the quality mechanic is going to be argued over for years. Still sweat it. Yeah, exactly. I, uh... I love quality. It is so fun to play with. It's at least so fun to think about. Some of the actual play is... Sometimes actually a little tedious, but... The, the thought of it and the solving it is extremely entertaining. Um... I want everything to be on the same lane. This should put it all on the far lane. I think. Yes. And then that will actually be... Ooh, Gleba! Oh. You know, that keeps happening. Do biters not... I mean, I have a lot of turrets right here. Do biters not have a... Um... Like... Warm-up attack time? Because I think they should. Because otherwise you get... This is... I mean, this is a very minor feat. It would be really nice if biters, like, couldn't attack for maybe half of a second to one second after spawning. Just so that if you already have defenses prepared to immediately kill them, they don't happen to get one attack in. Um, and yeah, turrets also, yeah, their turrets are not instant. Yeah, that's annoying. Oh, you have to use, so turrets have a longer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all that to say, I, I feel like that's annoying enough without a huge benefit that they could change that and it would be just nice for the player. It's a small deal. Just a minor annoyance, but, you know, might as well make it better. Um, okay, so... Shall we change this around even more, or is this good to go? So, items come in. They're all going to be on belts. And then... make the modules. Those get sorted into their respective boxes. And then 
boxes will output when we have enough in said boxes to the recycling. I don't know if three is enough. Uh, we'll have to do the math. We did the monster math. He did the math. Okay, and then all the, the different parts will go into the separate buildings, and then this one runs when it needs to. So... Yeah, I, I do want some basic prevention of this one from running unless we have too much stuff. And then egg spoilage will be dealt with, do not worry. I wanted to make a version of the blueprint that actually would work for all the other things too first before we before we made one for uh, before we dealt with the biter eggs. Because the biter eggs are only going to be showing up here. And then what we'll do is... Uh, well, and I guess they'll show up on this belt, too. Going back to the ingredients. But we always are, are prioritizing these. Mm, hopefully, we'll be able to make things fast enough that things won't spoil. Obviously, if we run out of... Uh, blue chips or something will have a lot of eggs spoiling so we'll have we'll have turrets here don't worry um, maybe I will use gun turrets I have plenty of piercing ammo uh, and that should make things a little simpler for kill times but yeah so the different egg qualities will end up here what's the recipe for uranium bullets again Oh yeah, I can easily do that. I have a simple 14,238, and that's just because we've run out of chest space. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to have some sort of recycling egg chaos here. How are we going to do that? We need to measure... A lack of eggs of different quality. And then supplement with that. Easier said than done. I guess I could just use... I could use any one of these rather than being super specific. I could just say if I have, you know, maybe greater than 10 legendary blue circuits, then I should on demand a legendary biter egg. Um, and like on average, that should work out fine. Technically, we could have... No, that should actually work out pretty well. Um, maybe I should use the, the module twos because module twos are actually really kind to you in the sense that they always recycle into exactly one because the recipe, where's the recipe? The recipe is exactly four. So because of that, you can get exactly one per recycling. And so that's actually the best indicator so if I happen to have eight of these and still zero eggs, then maybe I on demand an egg of that kind. Can you quality biter nests? Uh, I actually don't know. Uh, oh, okay, I guess you can, but they make more eggs, not quality eggs. Right. So... How do we do this? It's like I need something like this. And then... Beaconing nests. You cannot beacon nests. I think I did try that. 
Wait, quality nests is that they spoil slower. What? Oh, you mean that you mean like the the nests die or turn feral slower? I think that's what you mean. That makes sense. Um, I would assume they don't need more bioflux. If they do need more bioflux, that would kind of negate the whole point of doing it. If you need more bio, because like, uh, what am I getting at? Assembling machines go faster, but don't need more power. So I would hope that they're the same thing for nests, where they go faster, but don't need more bioflux power. Anyway, um, I think something like this will work. It feels, mm, no, I think I'd rather loop just one. I wonder what an egg recycle time is. That I do not know. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe we just do something surprisingly difficult to get. I guess I could flip it. That's how we self-recycle. And this is the one that will go back. Like that. Um, Bioflux as fuel. Uh, it sure looks like it's fuel. It doesn't seem like a new mechanic. It seems like the fuel mechanic. Um, it's just different that when it runs out of fuel, it starts getting damaged. Here. Control, what is it? Control shift. No, shift. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, it just consumes 100 kilowatts of fuel. It's just food fuel instead of fuel fuel. Oh, I didn't really want to do that. But, uh... Anyway, so yeah, we're going to have to control this with combinators. I'm not sure exactly how. But we're going to want to measure the contents of all these guys, certainly. And then when we feed that into some sort of combinator, we're going to want... Let's, let's think, where are my combinators? Cider combinator. So let's imagine we feed that into this guy and we say, if I have production module, productivity module two of, we'll start with legendary is greater than 10 and Biter egg is zero, then we would like to output Biter egg legendary. Are night visions offensive? Yes, they are. I cannot stand the new night vision. Um, cannot stand it absolutely horrific for me i know that not everyone agrees with that and that's fine because that is an opinion right it, everyone is allowed to have their own opinion but the new uh, but the new night vision the old one was just this like desaturated colors and that felt slightly annoying but acceptable because it was night vision the new one which makes everything yellow i actively dislike to the point where i felt relieved when it would turn off like when the morning would come and the, the night vision would turn off, I'd be like, oh, thank God, it's finally over. So that kind of told me, you know what? I'm just going to stop using night vision goggles. Um, so I will get a mod that changes that when, when that is available. Anyway, so... Hmm... Um, 
it kind of is odd you can't deselect the red network. Because it's like, what if I was connected to red later? Then I'm going to have to uncheck this, but I can't preemptively do that. Uh, that would be kind of nice if you could. Anyway. So basically, I need to feed... I'm just... I'm wanting to think, like, what if I needed multiple types at the same time? Like, if I need a legendary and a rare, I don't necessarily want it to be recycling the rare that it ends up creating when we just need it anyway. Um... Oh, sorry, this is the wrong signal. Um... So, yeah, so this is fine, but then I need it. This is the complicated part is how do we control all this? Because we're going to need basically we're going to need a fresh egg supply that only activates when we want something. So I guess we could have a decider combinator that says if anything is greater than zero. We'll output, you know, just the green light. And this will only enable... We've got the green light. So that's an option. Then... Uh, then this will feed eggies into the recycler. We will never want to not feed eggs into the recycler. Yeah, Code Cone, I'm a little confused on what you're saying, because Factorio had a version before that was... They changed it with Space Age. And in my personal preference, they made it far worse in Space Age than it was before. And I don't, I don't totally understand the reasoning for it, but... So I've seen some people online that say they like it and they hated the old version. So it's it's certainly just an opinion thing, but uh, for me it's a, it's such a gutturally strong feeling that like I I will never use the new version. I will I will always get a mod or I just won't use it. It's so bad to me. I think it's something about the colors changing. It almost it's like something's wrong. You know, it's like wait, colors don't just change. You know, if it was a it, when the night when the yellow night vision pops off it's just like blah like why was that ever yellow why are we so yellow um it's just if it was way less yellow i might not be bothered as much but it's so yellow anywho so we need to filter these inserters based on what we want right and so here i mean we could oh I have a simple idea. Yeah, so I guess the yellow is Nauvis, right? Because I, th I think it is a different color on each planet, and that's why they did it, um, was to make the planets feel different or something. But I, I it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. So now, here's my, my thought. We can just add up all these signals. And then... That can literally set the filter on the ones we want, right? And then... And sometimes it'll make one or two extra because there's some lag time between here and when it actually ends up in the chest that we're measuring from. I'm okay with that. That's not going to be the biggest of deals um, because eventually, you know, we're going to need more anyway. I don't know. Maybe it will be a big deal and I just don't know it yet, but I think it's okay to not do that. Um, anywho... Can I... Let 
black. Yeah, I can. So that can just blacklist all those things. So all the things. I feel like that's going to be risky. So if it's currently telling me we need an epic, then this is going to pull out any epics we get. And this will pull out everything other than epic, which means we'll just recycle our ourselves until we get to that higher level. Um, so then we need this guy. Also have that same those same signals. Um, But I want to have an and in here. We're basically I kind of want to stop feeding eggs in if we need to be recycling. I, I guess I don't know how fast this is going to run. Uh, I, I need to find out how fast eggs run. If they're like almost instant, then I don't need to worry about it. And if they're slow, I do need to think about which one we're feeding in at which point. So I'm going to go grab a couple eggs real quick. The last egg won't be picked up on the small belt near the recycler. Hmm? You mean the self-recycle belt? Like the little stubby two-length one? Why wouldn't it be picked up? Okay, so about the eggs. Oh, oh, uh, no, no, that's not the same problem. You're thinking of like if if a belt is saturated, then the inserter won't grab the front one just because it's not in the spot that it wants to grab from, but it will grab from that spot if that's the only thing on the belt. So it's not like this is going to be a forever saturated belt where the front one won't get grabbed. It will definitely grab from the front of the belt, if that's the only thing on the belt. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay, eggs are actually kind of slow. I was hoping they were faster than that. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Okay, maybe instead... But is that still fast enough? See, here's the thing, like, I need some serious math. Like, is even though it's not that fast, is it fast enough to get me the on-demand eggs that I need? Um... They have a one in four chance, and it takes whatever that is, 0.2 a second. Um, yeah, a, a faster recycler would help here a little bit. I I never set up a better loop than uncommon. Um, so, because what we need is to know. I I mean, we have no idea how often things are going to spoil and how often we're actually gonna need the services of this thing. So for now, I'm gonna say it's fine and we're not gonna deal with, um, we're not gonna deal with all the little problems and we're just gonna hope for the best. So if I need an uncommon, 
then it should just poop out the uncommon when we need it. So yeah, I don't know. I think this is okay. Um, this is going to require spider eggs. 50. And then... We'll recycle them. And what I don't want... Here's the thing I don't want. If this belt has something on it, then I want this guy to not be inserting. That's the, that's the way to do it. Because basically I want to say... We always prioritize recycling the ones that are already looped around. So we're going to hold... I can even do all belts. And then you are uh, enabled if... Everything equals zero? Uh, is true when there are no inputs. Yeah, that's, that's fine then. Um... Talking about epic recyclers, I could fix the Gambletron 3000. Ah, that's a good point, by upgrading the quality of this guy. Yeah, having that be an epic plant would probably make it fast enough to keep up. But then eventually when we get to legendary Q3s, I don't even know if that's true. I don't, I don't know what the ratio is. We'd have to, again, we'd have to math it out. But uh, okay, so that'll request eggs if we need them. Um. And what was this going to be? I think we can undo that. Quest eggs if we need them. Can't I just say anything is greater than zero? Here now? Is this combinator doing anything useful? Sure don't think so. Um, and yet, why is it turned on? No signals. What? It is false when there are no inputs. Oh, it does say disabled right now. There must have been like a tick where where it wasn't seeing the stuff. Hmm. Okay, so that should work. That'll recycle the eggs and the... I mean, look, is it going to work properly? Not 100% sure yet, but we should be fine. And if we're not, we're not. All right, so now to have some... Gun turrets. Make sure any insurrections are swiftly dealt with. Oh, I was like, why are we not building that? Only I saw I had a bunch of turrets, but that, those are laser turrets. Alright, and then, yeah, we'll put some over here. Just for whatever reason. This is where the normal eggs are going to end up on the belt. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, after you had productivity for asteroids. Yeah, you had to slow down the, the main inserter. That does make sense. Um... Okay, so here's where things get a little sticky. We need red, blue, and prod two. Oh. And then all of those are gonna come out of the recyclers from time to time. And so we're gonna need to sort out all of those things. So left is gonna be advanced circuits. And then left of that is going to be processing units. And these are all these items are going to be on the bottom going right, which is the outside here. So then that will be blue on the bottom, red on the top. So 
there's that. And then this is going to be the biter a, uh, yeah, biter eggs and what you call it? So the eggs go here. And then we prioritize those. The eggs are on the top. Spider eggs go there, and productivity module twos. Why does it say we don't have those in the network? I have about a billion of them in the network. Oh, that's not in the network. That okay? I was like, look, I know, I know very, very little in life, but I do know I made like 700 prod twos. Okay. I do have a jump scare heart attack waiting in my inventory. But it's not, it's so lame. When these spoil, only like five biters will spawn or something ridiculous. It's really lame. I I, I understand that it probably was overpowered, like in a, in a sense that the player was wrecked if you spawned one biter per, but I'm kind of disappointed that it doesn't. And I, as much as I don't love things being overly difficult, it feels weird that they do it that way on Gleba, but not on Nalvis. Especially given by the time you're doing it on Nalvis, you've already dealt with Gleba eggs, spoiling. I mean, or at least you've thought about it. And so you should be even more prepared for biters to, to spawn from the biter eggs. So I, I am curious why they did it that way, because like game design wise, it just feels weird. And yeah, the stack size being 100, obviously could be part of the problem, but then I think they did it that way to make biter eggs easier to transport to other planets, but then, I don't know, it's just kind of a weird. I'd prefer slightly more difficulty and consistency in that sense, and it'd be more epic when a pile of eggs does spoil, but uh, I do think I understand why they didn't do it. Okay, well, we'll see if this works. Um, I certainly am about to find out. I'll just put some more of these everywhere to make sure we're fine. We are about to get our first productivity module three. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, we even got an achievement for it. Nice. Oh, and we got an epic just right off the bat. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, what's the, what are the odds of that? 23.5%, which means we have about a 3%, no, well, 2.5% for an uncommon, or I mean a, a rare 0.25%. Yeah, like two and a half out of a thousand. That's a pretty, pretty lucky shot right there. Um. Yeah, I was curious if 100 was enough to keep things flowing here. Almost... Part of me almost says I should do a sushi loot. You know, the final egg here is going to spoil every time for the same reason we've had... There's the same problem we've had before. That is such a... Such a minor annoyance. I don't know how to fix it. is a way to fix it. Like, we, we even tried putting the inserter on the end. Chests don't fix it. Because we could put them into a chest here, but then this inserter is not grabbing from the end of the belt. So basically, if you ever put eggs on a belt in a saturated fashion, where the belt stays saturated, the, the one on the end is always going to just get left alone. And I, I have yet to figure out a way to deal with that. I guess you could purge the entire belt once in a while or do something crazy. Um, yeah, well, sushi, I don't know if that's a fix for this. That's just a different setup in the first place that doesn't deal with the problem. Or that doesn't have... It, it, it's a different solution to how to use belts. 
Um, well, it, an egg loop is going to actually be worse in some ways because the fresh ones are going to be mixed in with the more spoiled ones. And it actually increases the likelihood that things spoil eventually. By always using the ones on the end, you make sure that you have the least spoiled ones. Getting used first. So this is a way to prioritize the most spoiled. Yes, it does deal with this one egg on the end issue, but it fixes a lot of others. Um, yeah, the other method would just be to only request eggs, just to have a few looping around constantly. But but then the problem is if you add fresh ones, it, like you can get screwed over by one spoiling randomly if you use a sushi loop. I actually think a sushi loop is the worst method here for eggs. Because an egg loop has no control over what level of spoiledness is getting grabbed. And chests are fine when you're just doing one building, but when you have six buildings, I'm not going to put a different chest in front of every single one of these and request a few eggs. I could. That would work too. Yeah, you can loop it around, put everything into a box, leave the box with 50 in it so that it's always averaging something out and take out the most spoil. Yeah, there are lots of various solutions, but that's a completely that's a completely different thing than what I'm doing. I'm just talking about this one little issue of when you're doing it this way, which is a very reasonable solution. There's this one annoyance of an egg on the end. Um, and I just wish there was a way to fix that, and there isn't. Yes, there are completely different ways to solve the problem, but that was never in question. Um, so, yeah, so we've got this. Uh, it's going to be a while before we start the next level of stuff, because these are all getting you know, recycled. Am I keeping up with the blue circuit costs, by the way? Yes, very much so. Oh, right. The No, no, no. Wait. No, these can't have speed. I had eight of those running, so I guess we could do it. Yeah, and of course we could once in a while recycle eggs, but yeah, let's do this. I also don't love that these have so many biter eggs inside. Is that gonna be a problem? They're like constantly refreshing them. I guess they're not constantly refreshing them. They wait until they get down to like one or two left. Um, so eight times 0.30. So we need about one prod two a second. We have more than enough uh, production of that. So yeah, it'll be a question of do I have enough circuits to for these to be running? Yeah, that's that's a good point. That is a good point. All right, so this is the Gambletron 4000 with egg quality upcycler attachment. <laughs> um, certainly an interesting. Design. I could I could definitely make it more compact. We've got a lot of little wasted space in here, but I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're good. I just need to see these numbers kind of get higher to start recycling stuff. Oh, thank you. Yes, these, these machines are supposed to have quality as well. And I do have... All epics in these, right? Yes. Oop, missed one. Uh, eventually the legendary. Why not? What's what's five more Q3 epics? <laughs> they only cost a million dollars each, basically. Oh yeah, uh, yes. No, that that is a good. That is that is true. <laughs> you, 
If you're already making a legendary, you can't upgrade it anymore. That I will agree with. But uh, you you can hope. Yeah, let the legendary -er, you know? Always hope for the legendary -er modules. Alright, pretty soon these are gonna be dumping out and getting recycled. Oop, we already got it happening. Nice. So this is where the chaos begins, because we're going to be getting... Okay, everything went to the right lanes. I like to see that. Oop, there we go. There's some uncommons. Oh, I never... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never fixed this. Okay, so we have to solve this problem, which is... We only, this one only runs if, maybe if the chest is starting to get, we'll just do a super simple, like we only enable it if the uh, prod to uncommon is greater than eight. That just means the chest is starting to get full, and it's full enough to kind of support this one running full time. I think that's a simple way. It, it's not perfect, but I think it'll work. Um, and I think eggs are definitely going to spoil in this area. Although, the nice thing is the higher quality ones last a while, so maybe, maybe we'll be okay? I mean, if this gamble, if these Gambletron 3000s were any... Uh, if there are any indication, we can make like one point. Well, the numbers aren't right anymore. We screwed up because these chests were filling up with things, and now we're, they're not giving me the the accurate ratio. Any wait, what? Why is this not running? Okay, you're telling me that. No, this isn't right. No, I, this should be running. Why is this not running? Oh, do I just have enough epics? Is that... Did it stop because of that? Is that even something I have? Uh-oh. Is the Gambletron 3000 broken? Um... What's going on here? I don't have epic superconductors? I literally thought I just saw a bunch. Oh, there's only one. Okay, never mind. We're okay. Weird. How do I have so many epics of the other types? That doesn't seem right. Especially because these numbers are all very similar. That's enough for like five or four plus some craftings, four plus some, four plus some. But only one? I guess it's not that far off. I only have to fail a few extra times. But those are the types of issues that accumulate over time with the ratios of recycling. Okay, so then these... Oh, we got one running! Nice! Bugs attacking. I might have bugs attacking in here soon. But yeah, this is this is I think working. Um, so I've got prod module threes going. Where do I want to put them? I guess uh, an obvious place for them would be blue and red and green circuit crafting. Those are already pretty productive, though, at 110% for the blue circuits. So I'm not going to make a huge dent in that. Um, this will be... This is already 180% as well, but... I still help a bit. 
there are five modules, so we're multiplying whatever increase we have per module by five. Uh, I'm gonna start with some requests for uncommons. And we'll start using those in different places. Wow, that actually is a huge boost. Holy crap, going from prod twos to uncommon threes is a 35% add-on. That's actually a lot more than I thought it would be. Wow. So we're up to 2.45 productivity. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, and then these guys run the most often, so I'll put these in the final ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, as far as research, Waskily, that's exactly right. I'm not really researching that much these days anyway. And the labs already have kind of a ton of productivity. You know, most of my resources are not going into research at the moment, even if I do a research here or there, so it's not a big deal. Uh, you cannot prod uh, module makers, Maria, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would do just that. Okay, so that's done. So I guess what we can do is copy this now for speed threes. Maybe, maybe. Maybe gravy. Um, let's parameterize this. What? I can't hit Q. Um... Did I just find a crazy bug? I, I, I can't, I can't get rid of the blueprint. What, what do I do? Do I put it in the trash? Oh, okay, there we go. Jeez. Um, how is my inventory so full? That's a different problem, I guess. Here, let me just, I'll just go down to whatever it is I'm requesting with one. But yeah, that was uh, that was scary. I was like, what's happening? I thought it was a bug for a second because I was like, oh, there's no way my inventory's full. I don't think I realized how full my inventory was. So that's, that's my B. Got so much random crap at this point. But uh, anyway, um, okay, so copy that. Parameterize it. We're gonna change that into blues. That into blues. And then we'll just build that a little further down the line here. So I wanna get those higher quality speed threes going too. What did, what just happened? Did I? Did I not do this? Oh, you know what? I bet I clicked out of it. This is, this is one of those like, it's not really a bug, but it's kind of a bug. If you click outside of this parameterization window, it, it actually is the same as escaping it and canceling it. Where I do not think that's the correct. Thing that it should be doing. Alright, uh, okay, so there we go. Yeah, E does work properly, but like if a window can't, like the inventory, you can't just click and it closes. So really, if, if click to close works, it should also save. Um, in some cases, click to close doesn't do anything. Like right here, click doesn't do anything, right? So there are places where click to close just doesn't work, which is fine. But if click to close is going to work, I think it should confirm your choices. Or just click to close shouldn't work, which is maybe the better solution because you could argue click to close saving your choices feels weird. Um, but in that case, click to close just shouldn't 
well, shouldn't close it. Uh, anyway. My point is we have speed modules. So now I just copy the Gambletron? Is it really that easy? Is the Gambletron 4000 still working? It seems to be. Um, I'm gonna stack side, or uh, override stack side to one on these bad boys. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the noob question, Spleen. When should you start using modules? Yeah, so, uh, you know, you guys mentioned Prod 1 modules, and I actually completely agree with that. Prod 1 modules are really nice to just put in your assemblers because even though they decrease the speed, the productivity increase is about the same, so it almost compensates for that. So really, it doesn't even slow down the output of your items. I mean, it technically does by like 1 or 2%. Um, the, the main issue is the energy consumption, so I would only do that, obviously, if, you, if power is not an issue right now. And then efficiency one modules are really nice if you are having power problems or worried about pollution. And then speed module ones are actually quite nice, too. Being able to make your blue assemblers 40% faster or your yellow assemblers 80% faster, those are pretty huge uh, swings. And beacons are also definitely worth it because they actually are more effective for the two modules you put in them than if you were to put those two modules in the building itself because they have a 1.5. So modules are definitely worth it, is the short answer. This one on the end is about to spoil, actually. <sighs> Yeah, efficiency one, if you're worried about biter attacks, or maybe worried is the wrong word, if you're actively getting attacked by a lot of things, um, you definitely want to use efficiency modules. In in your miners is kind of one of the main places, but really just everywhere works. All right, is there anything else we're not doing that we need to be doing for this? We've got lasers in case of biter spoilage. Got this going. I don't know. I think this is pretty good. So then we'll copy this. Um. I will remove, <laughs> just try to deconstruct and planner these things. Remove those. Well, can't really remove that without messing it up. I'll remove the requester chests. Need the lasers. And then I can just take that, put it up here. You're just starting to mess with oil? Yeah. You remove biters before they get the chance. That is definitely the way to do it if you can keep up with it. That's the way to do it. That's not going to be... Oh, you know, I should have parameterized this. Hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Um, I need those to be there. Ah! Those to be those. And these to be tungsten carbide. Confirm. Save. There we go. I meant to do that first. But the nice thing is you can just paste it over. And now all of our inserters, like back here, should have the right settings. Um, place that, and I think good to go. Minus these trees. Really? 
That's too far to reach? Wow. I guess I'm so used to the quality of life research stuff. That feels so close. <laughs> Especially with mech armor. Not that mech armor should make your arms longer, I guess, but it feels like it should in my head. <laughs> Yeah, Maria, I, I, I feel like there's a word for that. I forget what it is, but when you're wishing you could go back to knowing less about something. It's I felt that way with a lot of like RPG games. Definitely feel that way with um, like Outer Wilds, like really, really story based games that you can never go back to not knowing anything about. Um, there are lots of games like that where it's just so fun to like have the process of discovery. And once you've played for hundreds of hours, that you, you just can never get that back, and that's kind of sad. Alright. Sweet! Speed 3 Gambletron is a go. And now it's just a question of... Are things fast enough? Uh, I guess what we should do next is a beacon gambletron. I do need steel and copper for that, but I've already got the circuits up here. So why don't we? Well, okay. Let me let me fix a couple things about this blueprint. I guess they're well. I guess the question is these pieces might be the wrong ingredients, but if I were to parameterize Wait, wait. Uh oh. Where are module two showing up in this? In an insert Oh, it's that one. Oh, right, 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 right. I forgot about that. Um, so I'd have to manually change that depending on what it is that I'm making, but I don't think nostalgia, no, no, nostalgia is the feeling you get when you think back to those memories and they're very fond and you're like, ah, oh, I kind of wish I could go back to, to that time. It's different than, than being like, the particular feeling you get when you're playing a new game and you're enjoying the newness and it and you specifically wish for that newness back i don't think that's the same as nostalgia it's more like there's something special about a newness experience that you're you're wishing you could do again just because it was so great and i think that's a little different than nostalgia um but Let's see. Well, a lot of things are the same thing chemically in your brain. That's not really a <laughs> salient point. Um, that's like saying one video game is the same as another because it gives your brain the same chemicals. But like, well, no, they're different things. Uh, I don't think I can do this easily for beacons is the problem. I can set that to beacons. We could set this to be ingredients of a parameter, but then... I think I'll just leave it for now. What was the 2000? Oh, that was for the epics. Right, right, right. Mainly, we just want to set them all to a beacon recipe, and that'll get me halfway there. Um, and then I'm going to rotate it, even though it looks weird upside down now that I've spent so long looking at it. And we're going to put it over here just because we can. And then I'm going to deconstruction planner on trees and rocks because I want to get those out of here. Senor fiance, um, you found that you can't parameterize a fuel request in a blueprint for trains. I, I am not. I'm gonna have to say sorry, but I can't help you. There's. I have not really played with trains past the bare minimum in Space Age. So as far as like interrupts and parameterization when it comes to dealing with trains, I have very little to, to offer you in that sense. 
Okay, so this one, I've got green on the left and red on the right. So we want to do that and that. These guys. And then we're going to need copper and steel. So we'll do, I guess, copper cable on the left and steel on the right. Hey, thanks for following. Two dead. I actually don't really care for any regular beacons. We're going to go straight for... Should I just go straight for rares? Let's go straight for... I'll do 10 of each, and then we'll go for like 100 rares. And then past that, I'll grind epics. Um, and then this guy is needing to measure something. Let's do red chips, and we're going to need 40. Uncommon red chipos. And that'll be enough to get that one. Okay. Um, do that. A little bit more light. Never hurt nobody. And now we need steel and copper cable. Huh? And maybe someday we'll set up a laser turret grinder so we can can have uncommon laser turrets over here. Oh, here we go. Already not getting enough green chips. Okay, so let's go uncommon rod modules on these guys. That should help a little bit. And I guess I just need more. There's a, there was a copper cable on the end of that belt. I don't know how that happened. It's looking a little better. Now reds are the thing we don't have enough of. Okay. Definitely need to continue increasing these guys. And then we can start increasing the beacon's effectivity. And that will help the speed even further. Ah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All of the things. All right, and then we just want to green belt all of this. So let's do that. And now let me get steel. Copper cable's a weird one. Because normally I make it on site, but in this case I don't even need very much cable. Um, I've already got a bunch right here. seeing unstacked or am I seeing gaps what am I seeing maybe I was just seeing little gaps there's little weirdnesses in the no, there shouldn't be gaps what is going on are they not all stacking to 16 because 16 is four sets of four, and these wait until they're full, so there, it shouldn't be possible for there to be things that aren't stacks of four. And this should be a full lane, no matter what, because there's a full. this is fully saturated back here. So there shouldn't be any blips on this belt, but, but I was seeing blips. Technigo. 
So what, what was going on with that? Right there. I saw one. It was like right in this section. Yeah, I just saw another one. Hmm. Is there... I wonder what the issue is. It's either visual or is it real? Is there a red belt in there somewhere? Oh, well, that's a good question. That could cause such an issue. Uh, nope, no red belts. So, so... Because there's a fully saturated lane behind it, it should this lane should never be not fully saturated. I don't know what... If it's just a visual thing... But something has gone weird a couple times. It's not very... Oh, there was another one. I wonder if it's like a rendering issue, where maybe it's rendering one on top of another when it should be beneath the other. I'm, I'm, I'm presuming it's a visual bug and not an actual belt compression bug. Because belt compression has been pretty, pretty trustworthy for a long time now. And I would assume turbo belts didn't break that, but I don't know. It used to be a really big deal. It used to be really hard to get belts to be fully compressed in Factorio. I'm so glad that's not the case anymore. But it's definitely different. Okay, so now... now How's power, by the way? Are we doing okay? Yeah. Definitely using a lot with these EMPs. Wow, I'm surprised I had enough to build all of it. Okay, so anyway, we need the steel up there. Um, I also just realized with everything I've done for iron and copper, I never did steel. So we can improve that pretty easily over here. Lower down a smidge there. And then we'll do. Boundaries. Picking steel. Inserters. I need to get uncommon uh, power poles at some point. This is just so ridiculous. Eleven steel per second. Like, come on, that is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Okay. Like, unbelievably huge amounts of steel. Okay, this is all meaningless now. All this old iron production. Though, I don't know if that coal belt was meaningless, so I'm not going to kill it just yet. Okay, so that steel... Where was that coming from? Um, that was from up here. Oh, I forgot about this steel build. Cut that off. You have yet to actually play Factorio. You're scared of what it'll do, it'll do to you. Well, I gotta say, it's a great game. Being scared is correct. It's called Cractorio for a reason, but uh, at the same time, I cannot recommend it enough.
Okay, wait, what am I... Where am I taking steel? Okay, so steel was right here. This is the new steel. And yeah, okay, I think we're good to go from here. If we green beltify everything. Not that I need more than a red belt of stacked steel, but you never know. You never know. Let's get that all upgraded. All the way to the end. Wow, that goes away. Okay. You've gotten to LV three times before starting over. Well, hey, LV is a big accomplishment in GT and H. I gotta say, like that. Ooh, that was a cool wave of bots. Uh, LV is is a big accomplishment, so you should be proud of that. But it is the start over itis is certainly a thing in Factorio as well as as well as Minecraft. I do know that. Hard to avoid. All right, let's grab steel from here. I don't know exactly what I'm doing for upper cable. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna take this out over here. Find all this nonsense. Okay, so there's steel. Um. So what am I short on? I need an absurd amount of circuits. These are eating five a second each, which is, that's a lot of red circuits. Uh, we should probably be done with the episode now that we're working towards beacons. We can say this episode was Gambletron 4000. Next episode is Epic Beacons. So I will call it here. I will keep streaming, so if you're here live, don't go anywhere. Um, but for the future YouTube recording, as always, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode.